Hello, and welcome to the Airship Pirates build server. Uh, today I'm going to do a video that I promised some time ago, but I just got busy and haven't been able to do it. And that is, I'm going to talk about how to make extremely lag-efficient ships. That is, ships that do not cause very many black block updates, and therefore go faster. Uh, so both of these ships um, were I kind of created as test ships. This one wasn't a serious attempt, it was just to see how fast things could go. Uh, that's the Fireball uh, Merchantman. And that one is an actual functioning uh, warship I put a bit more time into. I mean, it's still not like a, a completely developed design, but it's enough to show the basics. Um, all right, so let's start with the Fireball over here. Uh, so this is designed to be a merchantman. As you can see, it has no bridge. Um, I had a... The, the original Fireball did have a bridge. This one doesn't. It's just basically my laziness. I haven't put it in yet. The reason I made this was to test how fast a 100% efficient hull would go if it was filled with chests. And you can see the answer right there, which is 38. Uh, so uh, this moves at 38. The original moved I think it's 60, or something insane like that. Here, let's find out. So real quick, we're just gonna do a test. So there's the chests. The chests run along the entire uh, length of the hull. We're going to replace that with wool, just as a test, so that you can see how fast this went before I made this change. And there. And I can see a bunch of people buzzing around. All right, we're going to set this to wool. Okay, now let's see how fast it goes now. So there's no pilot sign. I have to actually pilot it. And I have to actually cruise it. Okay, you can never trust the first response. You have to wait for the second cruise to find out how fast it's going. Okay, it goes 64, apparently. Um, so this design is 100% efficient. Uh, and... That's why it can go so ludicrously fast. Let me explain what I mean by 100% efficient. Basically, if you have... Uh, uh, whenever, whenever Movecraft is drawing a moving craft, what it does is it draws all of the blocks at the front of the craft that, are, that used to be air, and in this case are becoming wool, but they're just becoming whatever the craft, use, uh, whatever the craft is made of. And then... All of the blocks at the back of the craft uh, are becoming air. They used to be wool, they're becoming air. It does not have to draw all of the blocks in between if your craft does not require it to do so. And uh, of course I've now hit something. Let's cruise back north a bit. Um, so a ca craft is considered 100% efficient if move craft does not have to place any blocks at all except the blocks at the front, and the blocks at the back. Now, no craft is truly one... Well, okay, no. It's very rare to have a craft that is truly 100% efficient. Because, like this craft, it's very nearly 100% efficient, uh, but it has no bridge, right? If I put a bridge on this, it's not going to be 100% efficient anymore. Also, let me stop this thing. The tail, um, the uh, engines on the back uh, are, you know, you have to have redstone back there, and, and that, of course, is not efficient either. And by the way, if you're wondering why it changed colors, um, that's because, as I mentioned in a previous update, uh, it will not change colors unless it has to, so that your craft looks normal when it's stopped, it l looks normal when it's moving slowly, but if it's moving super fast, the colors will be distorted, but who cares? Uh, it just, you know, it's just a, a visual thing. Um, and typically, you can't really see a craft that's moving super fast anyway. Uh, you can only see the uh, little sparkles, the magic green sparkles. Okay, all right, all right. So back back to the, the theory that is at work here. So, it may surprise you to hear that this ship, in addition to a wool outer layer, is also completely armored. Uh, so it has endstone armoring throughout. I'll show you how that works. So I'm going to replace all the wool with air. And now you can see the armor structure. Um, so, the way you can have armoring and still have a 100% efficient craft is you just make sure that the armor repeats on a pattern that is equal to the uh, cruise rate of the craft. So in this case, uh, it's a airship type, which m cruises 
every four blocks. It skips four blocks whenever it cruises. Which is why, if you look at this, there's this kind of, there's this shape here, which repeats over and over and over and over and over again along the entire length of the ship. So how, how that works is when Movecraft is drawing it, it only draws it once, it only draws those armor plates once, and it doesn't have to move any of the others because they won't have shifted position. Uh, I'm not sure if it's completely clear how that works, but I'm going to try to uh, to make that more obvious as, as we keep going. Also, I'll go inside this thing so you can see what the inside looks like. So it's just cell after cell after cell after cell uh, of these identical cells that repeat every four blocks. And if these chests were still here, you can see that each and every one of these cells is a firewall, you know? So uh, if you set one cell on fire, it will not set any of the others. Um, now, of course, right now it has this big hole in it, so that's not true. But if the chests were there, uh, these would each be completely separate cells. So that's cool. Uh, so th what you will find, uh, in general, when making extremely efficient ships is it is easy to make them armored. Uh, now the same rules that have always applied still do, which is to say that you have to have enough lift to support the armor, right? Um, but it's relatively easy to make very well armored fast ships. It is harder, but not impossible, it is harder to make well armed fast ships. Uh, so you will find it to be the case that, in general, uh, the, the, the better armed a ship is, the slower it goes, yet that is not true of armor. So you can have super fast armored ships, kind of like the, the fast battleships of World War II. You know, having a whole lot of steel doesn't necessarily make a ship slower, uh, but all of the guns, in Movecraft case, does, because they kind of stick out and slow the ship down. All right, so that's, that's the basic principle of the fireball. Now let me show you this other ship, which I'm calling a Jaeger uh, or a Hunter. Um, so this ship uh, is designed to be an attack craft, and the schematic is simply Jaeger, spelled with a J. And let me show you how this thing works. Now this is not quite finished, and we're going to work on this a little bit in the video, just so I can show you some of the techniques that are at work here. Um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, it's it's a ship. It's a submersible. It goes really fast. Uh, it can go faster underwater than some ships go above water. Um, let me just show you that in action here. Except I'm going to hit that wall. <laughs> I guess I'll have to turn. Uh, Come on, start moving, ship. Ships are very slow in the beginning, and it's gonna be doubly true since I have to turn around. And turn one more time. Oh, come on. There we go, now I'm facing the right way. I should really do this in the arena. But all right, so my speed, top speed is only 17. That's because I was just turning. But as we keep going here, it goes to 46. So this thing moves at 46. That's really fast. <laughs> um, okay, so, and then you can see the weapons. So I have a whole bunch of torpedoes here. Those torpedoes are set up in a lag efficient way, meaning that they repeat every four blocks. I also have two cannons. Now they are not out right now, right? So the ship is a very, very streamlined shape. Uh, you can't see the cannons right now, but the way this works is you simply Move that, now the cannons are deployed. There they are. And you'll note, those cannons have redstone on top, which means the, that uh, you can't submerge with the cannons out. Also, with the cannons out, your speed goes down a little bit. Like we were more moving at 46, now our top speed is 43. So you see how that works. And these cannons uh, do work while moving. So I could just fire this. I don't think it heard me, try that again. There we go. And fire again. It works pretty solidly. Uh, they are, of course, a adjustable arc and all that good stuff. Um, also, they can de-elevate, so that you can aim up or down. Yeah, works well. All right, um, so that's the basic ship. I mentioned that you have torpedoes. 
<laughs> and that's not how you use them. Uh, so what happened there is I fired the second torpedo and not the first. That was incredibly dumb of me. Um, yeah, let's uh, pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, I'm going to make it so that that doesn't happen, because uh, soon I'm going to make it so that tor um, torpedoes have minimum arming distances. Um, yes, how that was supposed to have gone is... Let's start this thing moving again. And I'm going to let it get some speed. Did I stop? No, I'm still moving. It's just taking a long time to get up to speed like it always does. All right, um, also you can make the guns face aft if you want. So you can shoot at something you're running from. One limitation of this design, the guns cannot face uh, forwards. I'm sorry. <laughs> they can face forwards. They can't face to the sides. Ugh. All right, now that I'm moving a little faster, I want to show you how this works. So if you launch the torpedoes, it's kind of neat. You're like, you're moving along with the torpedo, sort of. I don't know why I think that's cool, but I think that's cool. No. Oh. I hit something. Oh, I see. The torpedo stopped, and then I hit it. You can also see the green sparkles left in the torpedo's wake. That's how you can, uh, you know, see things that are far away, even during high lag. Which is another cool feature. All right, I am getting distracted. Let's get back to the point. So, yes, it's a ship. It's cool. It works. Great. Wonderful. Um, just check something. Yeah. I need to put more, more ammo in this. Anyway. So. Let's talk about how you make uh, efficient ships. So first off, speed is governed by two main factors. The first being the aspect ratio of the ship. So that is simply how long the ship is compared to how wide it is. As you can see, this ship is relatively long. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's not a stubby ship, rather it is a very long ship. And in Movecraft, as in real life, longer ships tend to go faster. Um, now there is a limit. Uh, in real life, uh, airships that were longer than an aspect ratio of about six to one, which is what I think this is, uh, airships that were faster, uh, that were longer than that, didn't actually go any faster. In the server, uh, we have set a hard limit of eight to one. So you simply can't make it long, uh, longer than eight blocks for every one block of width or height. And that's measured at the ship's uh, widest and tallest point. All right. Um, so yes, that's the, the first thing, aspect ratio. Uh, that is perhaps the most important, although they're both pretty important. Uh, the second is the efficiency of the ship, which basically means of the blocks that make up the ship, how many of them have to be redrawn every time the ship moves? Let me give you some examples. This dispenser has to be redrawn every time the ship moves. Whereas these uh, stained clay blocks don't necessarily have to. And if you look at the bridge of this ship, there's some easy things you can do. You simply space out your controls every four blocks. So there's a sign here, there's a sign there, there's a th sign there. It does not have to place any of the signs except the first one. Does that make sense? So it places this one, and then it doesn't have to place that one or that one. Similarly, these wool blocks. It has to place this wool block. It does not have to place that one or that one as the ship moves. Uh, torpedoes on this ship are also set out in the same way. These torpedoes are three long with one block of air between each torpedo, making a pattern of every four blocks that repeats every four blocks. Now, you could modify this, and perhaps it would be a good idea to do so. You could modify this to have two really big torpedoes, but it would lose a small amount of speed. I mean, it probably wouldn't even make a single digit of difference, uh, but I'm showing you the ideas here. 
And the idea is, wherever possible, make it so that it repeats on a pattern of every four blocks. Let me see what else I can show you of the bridge. Um, well, like the wiring is the same thing, like you've got a redstone here, you have a redstone there, and that also is repeating every four blocks. Um, I mean, there's some things you simply can't do that with. These gun controls, can't, you, know, you simply can't get it to repeat every four blocks. Um, I think that's enough about the bridge. The bridge, it's, this is pretty simple stuff. Uh, the idea of simply laying out your bridge so that where possible, things repeat every four blocks. But it's always a compromise um, between utility and efficiency. Now let's look at the internals. Now I have not actually spent a whole lot of time uh, making the internals of this very efficient, which, because I wanted to do it on, in this video uh, and show you kind of the principles at work here. Although even without any effort trying to make the internals more efficient, the ship is already moving at 46, which is a pretty good speed. And honestly, I'm not sure it'll go much faster. I think what we're really going to do is we're just going to add armor. Currently, the ship has no end stone armor. So let me show you how I do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste lines. Oops, that was too close to my little markers. I'm going to paste lines of the ship over here, but spaced out in such a way that we can look at uh, uh, how it looks along the length. Also, these markers are here to tell me when the pattern of every four blocks repeats. So that's, uh, so this, this is laid out every four blocks. If this was a medium airship, or a big airship, I think, I, I'm, uh, uh, just the medium actually, if this was a medium airship, these orange blocks would be every eight blocks, because that's when the pattern needs to repeat. Okay, uh, let's finish this up. There, there. I'm just gonna do, well, let's see. Should I do half the ship or all the ship? We'll start with half, just to give you the idea. Oops, too far. <laughs> Not far enough. Okay. Then the next one. So you see what I'm doing? I'm basically splicing the ship. Okay, keep going. I messed that up. Yes, I did. Is that better? Yes. All right, and now the last one. general, it is always possible to trade lift for efficiency. Let me show you how. So let's say I wanted to make this design more efficient and I decide that I have enough extra lift to do so. Well, one way I can do that is right now, uh, when Movecraft draws this, it has to draw this block, right, uh, because it changes from air to stained clay, and then it has to change it again into wool, all right? So, if I replace these with, whoops, stained clay, like that, whoops. My aim is, is very poor today. Now, 
Now, and I, let's say, just to, for sake of argument, that I did that along the entire length of the ship. Now when Movecraft draws it, it draws this stained clay. It doesn't have to change it to wool because this is stained clay as well. And then the next one is stained clay, the next one is, and so on and so forth. So that would make it more efficient. Now I'm not going to do that because in this case I already know that I don't have enough wool to spare. Also, I couldn't possibly extend this pattern all the way through the ship because of these bridge controls. See how that works? And this, uh, this piece of this gun. So because I already know that I couldn't succeed in actually implementing this throughout, instead what we're going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of armor. Now the armor that we're going to add, we're going to use the most efficient design possible, which is going to be let me just redo this. So the most efficient coverage of armor is going to be a, uh, a diamond shape. <clears throat> so we're going to use that. So we're going to put uh, diamond shaped reinforcements inside this thing, but only in the nose. And we're going to try to do it in such a way that it is very, very efficient. So we need this pattern to repeat every four blocks, right? And I can't really see, let's see. So right there, and then there. One, two, three, there. One, two, three, there. One, two, three, there. One, two, three. And I'm not going to do it here, because obviously that's going to be my cannon. And I'm not going to do it after that either. Because I don't want armor across the entire ship. I know I don't have enough lift for it. So I will stop the armor where it has to change to something else anyway. Does that make sense? So my Movecraft has to draw this dispenser here. So therefore, uh, I'm going to stop, use that as a convenient stopping point for my armor uh, so that it's not going to add any unnecessary updates. All right, and then we'll keep going, filling these in. Uh, I often will use a stack command uh, for this. But in this case, I think it's going to be faster to just do it this way. Now, for these blocks down here, I can keep going. So one, two, three. I could keep going here. Two, three. Two, three. Okay, so it looks like I could go all the way to the back of the ship. Now I need to make a judgment call, okay? Do I think I have the lift to continue this pattern all the way to the back of the ship? And do I even want to? I am going to say that no, I don't really want to. I don't want to have armor back there, and I don't think I have the lift for it. And even if I do, I'd rather keep that lift as reserve lift. The reason why is because the design of this ship is to chase after other ships. And so if it's going to take damage, it's probably going to take it on the nose. So I am going to stop my armor pattern here, even though it's not 100% efficient to do so. All right, let's keep going. And that's how it works. You kind of have to go through the ship making these judgment calls. Oops. Okay, that one can't be. So that one has to be... Uh, uh, that one has to be wool. <clears throat> Moving on. And then I'll do the same over here, except uh, remember it's a diamond shape, so it's going to be one back. So it's going to start there. Oops. And I'm going to repeat this pattern as well. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, and once again, I'm going to stop where the gun starts. And so on, and so forth. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't want to use up too much of this video, I think you see how this is working, which is uh, you just make sure the patterns repeat every uh, four blocks. Uh, let's talk about a few other things. Now this is a small ship, 
and doesn't really have uh, for for this that the the crew quarters is up here right everything you need is right there but let's say it wasn't let's say i was making a bigger ship and i wanted to have some crew quarters in here let me show you how you could do that and still keep it nearly 100 percent efficient uh, so what you would do is you would make it look like that uh, so this would be one of the rooms, uh, maybe not three high, let's make it two high, say that this is going to be one of the rooms, we'll leave that in for now, actually no it can't, well, okay, I'm just going to, and in this room I'm going to have, oh, uh, we're going to have a bed over there, okay, and I don't know, let's do it like a table or something. Maybe that would be on the other side. I'm going to put in, I'm just going to copy this. Well, I guess we'll do it properly. So I will take this line, this splice. Whoops, ah, I screwed it up. I have to do it again. Okay, there we go. Man, <laughs> sorry about this. Let me try again. There, finally. Okay, so yeah, we want to make a nice little crew cabin up here. And on this side, we're going to have like a chest. Although chests add a lot of uh, slowness, so keep your chests to a minimum. And a table. Okay, now let's talk about why this is actually pretty efficient. So when Movecraft is painting this, and if the ship is moving forward, it has to paint this square, right? Uh, because that used to be air, and it's becoming stained clay. It does not have to paint any of this air. Do you see why? Because it was already air in front of the ship, and the ship moves forward four blocks. So it has to paint this stained clay, but it does not have to paint any of this air. Or in the case of this side over here, it, doesn't have to, it has to paint that bed. It does not have to paint any of this air. So that's, that's a way to make your ship uh, have internal compartments and yet be nearly 100% efficient. And let's say we want lots of rooms. So I'm going to put another one right here. And pretend that this was legal because <laughs> the, obviously you can't have endstone exposed, right? So, you know, I have another room here. And once again, it doesn't have to draw any of this air because this already is air. See how that works? And if I, if I take it a step further, and I put my table there, and I put my chest here, then uh, it's still, and then the bed is over there, because this pattern repeats, um, it's not going to have to draw any of it except the first time. Although, once again, chests have big penalties. Now, uh, let's say we want a hallway to get through here. So, we will make a hallway over here. And you could have the hallway in the middle, it might make a bit more sense, but that's, this is how I'm going to do it. So here's my hallway. Now in this case, it's not quite as efficient, because it has to draw this stained clay, and then it has to draw this air. But it didn't have to draw any of the other air, because it's at the front of the ship, where it's, it was air to begin with, if that makes sense. Now, okay, so tips for you. <clears throat> in order to make efficient crew quarters, it is wise to make them not long, but wide. So build wide, not long. Because if I wanted to make a room that was longer, like this, I take out this wall between the rooms, now it's less efficient, right? Because it had to draw this stained clay, and now it has to draw the air that's right there. 
Uh, so that's two block updates. Update to stained clay, update to air, well, and then a third, because then it updates to wool uh, once again. So like I say, make it long, not wide. I think I screwed that up. Yes, I did. Make it long, not wide. And uh, if, you, uh, if you're designing a medium airship, you can make your rooms eight long, and, and they will repeat just fine. Let me see, what else should we talk about? Um, you can do a similar thing at the back of the ship, because the same rule applies. I have an engine back there, but if I didn't, um, if I have, let's say I want to, hmm, I'll do it here. So let's pretend that I didn't have that engine there. Uh, I could put a room right here because what it's going to do is as the craft is moving forward, it's going to move, it's going to switch these blocks to air, but it doesn't have to switch them to air again uh, back here. So it's the same number of updates as it was when this was full. So yeah, so th that's pretty much it. Uh, you can you can make internal compartments that are 100% lag efficient. Uh, you can take out inefficiencies by making them repeat. Let's say that I wanted to go all out and make this just super, super efficient. Well, I could add, oh, just as an example, let's do this redstone wire. I could add repeats of this redstone wire pattern, right? I could just do like that and like that. Uh, all the way to the back of the ship. And that's an important point. It only makes sense to do if you can repeat it all the way to the back of the ship. Um, because if it had to change, so in this case, you know, it has to change wool, this wool block, to this redstone wire block. Then another redstone wire, so it doesn't have to change. Another redstone wire doesn't have to change. Another redstone wire doesn't have to change. But let's say I stop the pattern here. Well, so then it's going to change it back to wool anyway, and I've gained nothing, because it's the same number of updates as if this was all wool. So if you can't take your repeating pattern all the way to the back of the ship, or all the way to something else that changes, then you've gained nothing. Like, that's what we were doing when we were doing that armor, right? We took the pattern back to a block it had to change anyway, so there was no loss in changing it at that point. Um, yeah, so anyway, I could add all this redstone that doesn't do anything, but I am sacrificing lift for speed. And once again, we're going to have to pretend that those uh, redstone, the engine wasn't back there. So you see how that works? I am making a pattern repeat to the end of the ship, even though it doesn't do anything other than cost me lift, but gain me efficiency. Now with a big ship, you can probably get away with that more than you can with a small ship. Although in general, most of the time it's probably not worth it uh, because you need that lift. Uh, there's, there is a co there's a compromise between lift and survivability. I'm sorry, a compromise between speed and survivability. The faster a ship is, in general, the weaker it is. Okay, well, yeah, that's pretty much the gist of how I handle it, uh, how I go through and, and make uh, ships as efficient as possible. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we should talk about. Uh, stay away from chests as much as you can, because they give you a severe penalty, which is why merchantmen aren't the fastest ships and always going to be the fastest ships, because that would be trouble if they were. Um, oh, yeah, one more thing. Like these, uh, these signs. So these signs repeat every four blocks, and that's good. But, in truth, uh, every sign is a single block update anyway. It's just, if these didn't repeat, it would be two updates. Because every sign, it has to paste the text, right? Uh, so it's two updates if the block changes, or one update if the block doesn't change. So it's still a good idea to make it repeat where you can, but it's not going to bring the block update count to zero. It's just going to be lower than it would otherwise be. 
right. Well, I hope this has been helpful. Uh, give me some questions. If there's anything that wasn't clear, um, just put your comments in the uh, uh, you know in the comment section, and I will answer those as quickly as I can. And thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.